I'd like to take you through another game from day one of the quarterfinals in the Skilling Open. And this is from the match between Anish Giri and Magnus Carlsen. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And do consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. You'll find the links actually in the video description. You can just click on those to get through. So here we go. Now this is a remarkable game. It's game four of set one. They'd drawn the first three games. And Geary missed a good chance in game one. And then the other two games drawn without too much incident. So this is the last game of day one, game four. It's a Joker Piano. And it is indeed fairly quiet so far. Here you could just kind of advance on, on the queen side if you want with b4, but rook e1. And in fact, they've had this position before and, and Carlson played rook e8 here. Um, but a5 from Carlson in this game, so he finally thinks, OK, I better just squash the whole idea of b4 with a5. Fine. Knight f1, bishop e6. Good idea to exchange off the active bishop. And here, previously, bishop takes has been tested before, but this is actually fine for black. You can often get play down the f-file. So bishop b5. And now there is a threat to push forward with d4 and d5, so the knight switches round to the king side. And if black manages to get the knight there and consolidate, then it's actually quite a nice position for black. d4. So pushing forward. And now pawn takes pawn. So black has given up a pawn. Well... Seems like black has given up a pawn, but knight g4 attacks the pawn on f2. You can see two pieces hitting it, and the knight can also switch back to take this. So bishop e3. Geary moving pretty quickly so far. And here Carlson thought for almost four minutes over his next move. I was a little bit surprised about that. Previously, we've seen... For example, knight takes in this position. This was played by Svidler, but actually white is certainly a bit better in this position. The knight looks at the bishop, but also basically makes way for the f-pawn to advance. White has a little space advantage, definitely more pleasant for white. But instead of recovering that pawn, Carlson decided to take the bishop, which is very nice, it's nice to have the two bishops here. That one on a7 in particular is a beautiful piece. But black is now pawn down. That's the downside of this. Pawn takes pawn and knight takes pawn. Clear pawn up for white. Now, I think Carlson's next move is really clever. I don't know whether this was prepared or not. But anyhow, it's a really nice concept. How does black gain play for the pawn? Well, he played knight g6. Excellent move. So black activates. You know, if the, if the knight drops back, then that queen can come into the game. The knight looks pretty good. Well, in fact, all black's minor pieces look very nice there. Decent compensation. So Giri exchanges off the knight which does rather damage black's pawn structure, but the f-file is opened. Black is still a pawn down, and then Geary exchanged queens. So the threat is to play the rook down to d2. So Geary played rook e2. Can't really put the rook on d1. Well, you can, but there's, there's an a-pawn loose. This, this is the problem. So rook e2 guards along the se second rank, guards the f-pawn 2. 
Now, perhaps you'd like to have a think. How would you play here with black? The moment black is a pawn down, how exactly do you get compensation? Now, I think this next move is really superb. It's a very undogmatic move. Carlson plays bishop takes knight, giving up the pride and joy of his position, that bishop, that dark squared bishop, which can't be challenged. But it's a good move. Well, in fact, white has kind of a threat here to play bishop c4, exchanging off those bishops. After bishop takes knight, of course, that's simply not possible, and black is left certainly with a better minor piece. Better, it's better than this bishop. And here, Geary thought for a couple of minutes. I'm guessing that he was caught in two minds here. He realised that if he played rook takes, this didn't happen, but let's just have a quick look. Then the rook would come down. And actually, black can make a draw here in a couple of ways quite easily. One is to take here and play rook d8. White has to cover. And then bishop takes pawn. Level pawns should be a draw. Another is to play rook d8. And after this, this forces a draw. Watch this. Check. The rook has to come back. Rook d2. Rook e2. Draw by repetition. Okay, a simple mechanism. Of course, Geary would have seen that. But he probably would have thought, well... We're drifting to a draw very quickly. I'm a pawn up. Surely I can make something of this. Or at least test Magnus a little bit. He recaptured with the e-pawn. So he's still a pawn up. But his structure is damaged. Then again, black structure is damaged over here. Let's see what happened. Remember that black controls that open file. Can't enter into the position... But that's important. Carlson played king f7. This is an excellent move. His king needs to be in the middle. In fact, there's one square which that king would like to get to, as we're about to see. Bishop a4, that piece, as I mentioned, it's just not as good as that bishop on e6, which just looks in different directions here. King e7, the king continues its journey h3. Well, I understand why that's played. Giri wants to rule out the bishop coming here. Now, bishop c4. This turns up the heat on white's position. And that's rather unpleasant for the rook. Where should it go? Rook f2 allows an exchange. And then rook d2. If the rook moves back, then rook d2 again. So the rook has to go to that rather awkward square on c2, blocking its own piece. Not that that bishop can be trapped. It could always has this square. But it's not nice when pieces tread on each other's toes. You need harmony in the position. Well, if you look at Carlson's position, that is a picture of harmony. Look at those rooks and the bishop all working nicely together. Rook d3. Pressure. The rook wants to take here, so rook e1. And now the king steps up. Bishop b3. Well, a rook and pawn endgame would give good drawing chances. Of course, Carlson wants to avoid that. Bishop a6. Now it's difficult for white. How do you rearrange your pieces? How do you bring your king into the game? Not possible, because that rook controls the f-file. Can't challenge on the d-file. Black has a very clear plan here. To push the king up to e5, advance the queenside pawns. Well, let's see. So rook c1. King e5. The king has reached the best square on the board. It can't be attacked, but, well, if all the rooks are traded off, you never know, it might even manage to get through here. Let's see. Rook d1. So finally, finally, Giri 
has managed to connect his rooks. They were split. I didn't mention it earlier, but it's worth mentioning now. They're now connected, and he's challenged on the d-file. But rook d8. Here, this is not easy to find. Here, I think Giri misses a way to gain a little bit of counterplay. He exchanged rooks. He should have played rook f1. Not an easy move to find when you're playing rapid play because it looks very odd to put your rook on the same diagonal as the bishop. But it's a good move. Here's the idea. If rook d2, for example, takes, takes, and the rook gets counterplay. And although this is a slightly messy endgame, basically white has enough play here to draw the game. And otherwise, it's very difficult to prevent the rook either entering into the position on f7 or f8 after an exchange, whoops, after an exchange of rooks here. So that was the way to do it, but not an easy move to find. Instead, Giri exchanged. And bishop takes. And now we have, yes, it's not an octopus knight, but it is a starfish bishop. That bishop dominates white's rook. The rook cannot get counterplay here by heading for the f-file. And how do you get rid of that bishop on d3? Really difficult. King f2. And now here's another excellent move from Carlson. How does Carlson make progress? Do you take this pawn? Well, if king takes, then bishop d1. That bishop bounces out to a better square. No, not that one. Do you play bishop takes? Nope, not that one. Rook d1. And an exchange of rooks, that should be a draw. So no, not that one. What did Carlson play? Rook d6. This is a beautiful move. He activates the rook. Now, let me make a, a random move for white, and let me let me just demonstrate what the idea is. So, for example, h4. Well, in fact, it's not so random, and it's, it's quite a good idea to try and just squeeze that pawn a little bit, prevent g5. So here's the idea. First of all, rook check. Let's push the king away. And then rook b6. Excellent idea. So the basic plan is to advance that c pawn, push the bishop out of the way, and take on b2. Really simple. And in the meantime, anyway, I mean, even if c5 isn't working for, for, the, for the moment, it just restricts that bishop. And white is so short of moves here. That rook can't go anywhere. The king can't go anywhere. It's almost a, a, a Zugzwang position. For example, um, well, if rook d1, then we'll take that pawn. Rook e1, well, c5. I mean, it's actually very, very hard for white to do anything here. And we can slowly squeeze on the queen side if rook d1, king takes. It's, it's an awful position. Um, or a3, well, we'll play c4. Now that bishop's protected. We're soon going to be able to play rook takes pawn and check won't amount to anything. Um, white is just getting squeezed there really badly. So that's the basic idea with rook d6. So bishop d1 played. Giri appreciates that there is going to be a problem with rook b6, so moves the bishop back. Now again, we shouldn't take too quickly bishop f3. And it's certainly... Uh, again for white to exchange those bishops. So careful play needed. Bishop c4. That is, that bishop is really um, <laughs> playing such a crucial role in this game. It ducks out and allows the rook down, attacks the a pawn as well. So if bishop e2, then let's play rook d2 well. We're in, basically. So b3, again, we're in. Rook d2, check. King g3, the bishop comes back to this beautiful square again, where it, I mean, the king and bishop, again, a picture of harmony. All that manoeuvring, and finally, 
Carlsen has managed to get his dream position with the rook on d2 and his king and bishop on beautiful squares as well. So this is tough. Um, rook takes pawn threatened if a4. Well, let's just continue the squeeze. c5. It's really nasty. Okay, instead, rook f1 played. Giri wants to get some counterplay, but rook a2. It's just, just winning for um, black, actually, now. Bishop here. Bishop takes b3. Well, it's obvious that this is a forlorn hope. King takes... You could check and try and push this a pawn, but actually, push the e pawn. But actually, this is just too slow. If you're if you're cool, if you just put the rook behind the pawn, actually there is no danger at all. If it goes to e seven, well, you you've got to watch out for a threat here. But king takes. You can see that rook is actually just stuck, can't move. Winning for black. So that's the position. The rest of the game was actually very simple. Bishop d5. Again, that bishop. Oh, boy. It's what a role it's played. Um, star star player in this game. Attacking the pawn on g2. Defending the pawn here. And this rook and pawn in game is hopeless. Simple technique. Now, here's a nice move. Don't push the a-pawn yet. Just put the rook back. Cover g6. And then the rook can go behind the pass pawn. That's the best place for it. And the king plays its part as well. So let's just see how this finished. Terribly simple now. Although Carlson's technique was perfect. Push the pawn. And now there's only one slight little danger that perhaps white could create a pass pawn. But we can... Stop the king advancing. And this just squeezes the life out of white now. The king just travels over to the king's side. Here, Giri resigned. Well, this is absolutely hopeless. For example, here, here. We can take everything. Totally winning for black. Well, that was an absolute masterclass by Carlson. Giri, I think, just was caught in two minds when he came to this position. He should have steered the game towards a draw, but who knows? Maybe he was fighting against his reputation and wanted to keep a bit of juice in the position, but he kept too much in there. Brilliant game by Magnus Carlsen.